Hi, welcome to Music Tech. This laptop doesn't exist, it seems. I've googled it, and the only thing I can find is the Yoga Slim 7 14 inch, but no 15.6 inch version. It kind of looks like an IdeaPad 515, but not exactly, so if you know what this laptop is and uh, what it's called in your country, please leave a comment below. Now, is it any good? Well, yes, but it has a couple of issues that I'm going to talk about. Before we start, I would like to mention that this video is sponsored by me. Making videos like this takes a lot of time and costs a lot of money. I am a one-man band and I make these videos for you to help you potentially save money and buy the right product for your needs. With that said, I would really, really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Currently, I have 62 subscribers. I want to thank you all for subscribing. Now let's get cracking! In the box you'll get the laptop, of course. Also included is a very small 65 said. watt USB-C charger, documents and some foam. This laptop comes with the quad-core Intel i5 1135G7 CPU with Intel XZ graphics, 16 gigs of 3200 MHz DDR4 memory, a 512GB NVMe SSD, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5, I bought it for about 1100 euros, including taxes. Now let's look inside. To remove the bottom cover, you'll need a T5 Torx bit and a guitar pick or some other plastic. Do not use metal. Now that we're in, we can see the two fans with two heat pipes. The SSD is user replaceable and it's a full sized NVMe SSD. The 69 watt hour battery takes up most of the space, so we should get decent battery life. There's also a second NVMe slot, but it's not full-sized. The RAM is soldered on the motherboard, so it's not upgradable. There's a very good number of ports as well. On the left side we have a USB-C Thunderbolt port, which is also used for charging, HDMI 2.0, Thunderbolt 4 40 gigabit port, and a headset jack. On the right we have an SD card reader, two USB 3 5 gigabit ports, and a power button. As I said a couple of seconds ago, there's a good number of ports. Taking a look at the chassis, it's very nice. It has a nice dark grey color as you can see, and everything is made from metal. It feels very sturdy. The lid opens with one finger and it feels well balanced. The hinges are very nice as well with the right amount of resistance. But the screen wobble is crazy. Look at this. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> but this only happens if you have the laptop on a table or a hard surface. I've used it on my lap and the wobble disappears completely. Look! So it shouldn't be a problem for most people. The air intake vents are on the bottom of the laptop and the exhaust vents are on the top by the screen hinge facing slightly upward. The soundbar grill is also on top. We'll talk about the speakers in a bit. I have some things to say about them. I think in time this soundbar grill will accumulate dirt and it might be hard to clean because the holes are large enough for dirt to get in, but too small to be easily cleaned. But time will tell. There's very little flex on the keyboard deck if I press down hard. And the same goes for the trackpad, but in normal use there's no flex at all. It weighs this many grams and this many pounds, ounces, milliliters and so on. The material used feel durable and I haven't had any problems with fingerprints or small scratches. The screen is a 15.6 inch 1080p 60Hz 16x9 IPS display with 100% of sRGB coverage and 300 nits of brightness. The bezels are quite thin, not Dell XPS, Huawei Matebook thin, but still very thin. The webcam is up top, as well as an IR camera for Windows Hello. It's a matte screen with no reflections and it's pleasing to look at. Viewing angles are good as well. Pixel response time feels very average with no noticeable blur for a 60Hz screen. It's comfortable for the eyes to stare at for long periods of time. It's not quite bright enough to use outdoors when you're out on the run or in bright sunlight. It's a very nice screen overall. Only downside might be the 16 by 9 aspect ratio for some people that use their laptop for viewing documents. But really, the difference between 16 by 9 and 16 by 10 screens is minimal in my opinion. And it's not a touchscreen. 
If this were a 3x2 screen like on the Acer Spin 5, watch my review on that one after you finish this video, you would notice a bigger difference. The automatic screen brightness doesn't seem to be completely off even if I turn it off in the window settings. So the brightness will go up if you have a white image like a Word document open and it will dim down automatically if you have a darker image. I haven't been able to disable this and it didn't bother me that much but it's something to be aware of. A note from the future. After updating the Intel GPU drivers this problem went away. But some other problems emerged. We'll talk about that soon. Now, please continue. I've already talked about the screen wobble when the laptop is on a table, so I'm not going to talk about it now. Oh, wait, I just did. It's pretty simple. Probably the best keyboard in the world on a laptop. Seriously though, it's a great keyboard with a perfect amount of key travel and springiness. The layout is very good as well and it has a numpad which comes in handy if you're using this as a music production machine or you like to use Excel or the Windows calculator a lot. Above the numpad section you have some media control keys which, uh, which is a nice bonus. It has two levels of backlighting and an auto mode so it can sense if you're in a dimly lit room and it will turn on the backlight automatically. Works very good. The caps lock and the numpad keys have small indication lights as well. There's also plenty of room on the palm rest for your palms to rest. And you can use your thumbs to navigate with the trackpad. Speaking of the trackpad, it's a decent sized glass windows precision trackpad. The clicks feel good with the diving board design, but it has a major issue in my opinion. There's a slight but very very extremely annoying delay if you're trying to make small precise movements. There's a small initial delay when you start moving your finger and if you stop and try move again, the delay is very obvious and noticeable. But if you keep moving your finger and don't stop, there's no delay. It's really hard to describe so I hope you understand what I mean. It makes the trackpad almost unusable in some situations. Sure, you can connect an external mouse, but if you don't want to use a mouse, like me, this is not a good experience. I've had this problem on other Lenovo laptops and I don't know if it's a hardware issue or a software issue. I've tried different settings in Windows, I've updated the BIOS, reinstalled the drivers, nothing helps, so maybe it's a hardware issue with this particular laptop, or most likely it's the Windows Precision drivers. If you know what this problem is or how to solve it, please let us know in the comments. Lenovo must have been a bit drunk when they designed the speakers on this laptop. Don't get me wrong, the speakers sound great if you have the laptop on a table. They're loud and clear AF. There are two downward firing speakers on the bottom and a soundbar on the top. The soundbar is kind of off-center and only the mid frequencies are present. But the presence and treble come from the two downward firing speakers. So if they get blocked when you for an example have the laptop on your lap, they sound like ass. Why didn't they use the soundbar on top for the high frequencies and put the bass or the mids on the bottom? It's like if you take a 2.1 speaker system for your computer and put the sub on the table and the satellite speakers on the floor. It will sound like shit. But as long as you have the laptop on a table, the speakers are great. The speakers actually sound best at over 50% volume. The Dolby Atmos control panel is great as well. You can set up to three custom equalizer settings and there are a number of presets to choose from depending on the use case. The two fans are quiet during normal use, watching videos, listening to music and even if the laptop is running in best performance mode. But when you push the CPU or the GPU the fans are quite audible and there's a high pitched noise coming from them. It's not as bad as certain gaming laptops but if you plan on using this laptop for music production or in a quiet room, the fans could be disturbing. You'll have to push the laptop quite hard to make the fans spin up to the point where they start to be disturbing. Overall, the fan noise is okay for most things. They're not ramping up and down like on some other laptops. So at least that's good. Battery life is decent. I got about 8 hours doing things like watching videos, listening to music, typing documents and so on. I had the better performance setting in Windows Power Management and the screen brightness was between 70 and 80% during my use. So you might get better battery life by lowering the brightness a bit and using the better battery setting in Windows. Also, the keyboard backlight was almost always on when I was using it. It should get you through a workday, no problem. The CPU performance is very good on this laptop. It stays between 3 to 3.2 GHz during sustained load like Cinebench R23. I ran the test once when the computer was newly booted and got a score of about 5300. And that is a bit higher than what I saw on the Acer Spin 5. 
and then I did the test for 20 minutes, 2 times 10 as well, and got a score right about 5000 points, which is very good for this computer. So no complaints on the processor performance. The temps stayed nice and cool at about 75 degrees Celsius under full CPU load. And there was no difference running on battery power. Now let's take a look at the GPU performance. Unfortunately, it wasn't great. Starting with some gaming. In CSGO I was getting about 50 to 80 FPS at 1080p high settings with MSAA turned off and FXAA turned on. Comparing that to the Acer Spin 5, the Spin 5 got about 7230 FPS at almost the same resolution. The Spin 5 has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio and the same i5 1135G7 CPU with integrated graphics. Rocket League ran pretty good at above 60 and close to 90 FPS at times at 720p with high settings. Motion blur was turned off. That's great, but the Spin 5 got between 80 and 100 FPS and it felt smoother too, so yeah. And last we'll take a look at Quake Champions which ran really bad. I was a bit surprised actually. I got about 30 to 45 FPS which is not really playable for this type of game. Yet again if we compare it to the Spin 5 it did between 80 to 115 FPS which is a huge difference. And I tried everything with the latest Intel, the GPU drivers as well as the drivers Windows had already installed. The results were the same regardless. I didn't bother running Fortnite because I have a feeling it would have run pretty bad. I think the poor GPU performance is mainly caused by the 3200 MHz DDR4 RAM. The slower RAM makes the GPU portion of the processor slower as they are sharing the memory. The Acer Spin 5 uses LPDDR4X memory running at 4233 MHz in quad channel mode. That makes a big difference in bandwidth. Video editing works very good. I mainly edit at 1080p 60fps and I haven't had any issues. Light 4K editing should also work with no problems. Same goes for photo editing. The SSD speed is good, about 3.5 GB per second read and 2.9 GB per second write. It's a PCIe Gen 3 SSD as you can see from the read and write speeds. Yeah, I think you should be able to upgrade to a Gen 4 SSD. Wi-Fi performance was also very good. I didn't have any issues with connectivity and the transfer speeds were very good. Unfortunately, the SD card reader was very slow. I got about 20 megabytes per second when transferring a file. Uh, with my external SD card reader plugged into the USB 3 port, I got about 90 to 95 megabytes per second. So yeah, it's not really usable. Now, let's go over the good. The screen, the keyboard, the chassis and the feel of the computer, the build quality, the port selection, the CPU performance, Windows Hello camera and the thermals. And some bad things. The iGPU performance, speaker setup, trackpad tracking, no touchscreen, the fan noise and a webcam. So, should you buy this laptop? If you're someone who wants a great keyboard experience, a good screen, great build quality and if you plan to use the laptop for typing, surfing the web, watching YouTube, doing some light video, photo editing and some very light gaming, then this is a good option. However, the trackpad issue and the speakers for me personally are a deal breaker. Let me explain. When I use a laptop, I don't generally use a mouse because I have the laptop mostly on my lap. Therefore, the trackpad must function correctly or it gets frustrating and annoying really fast when it doesn't. Same for the speakers. If they are covered by my legs, it sounds terrible and that sucks. What's important for you when using a laptop? Do you own one of these? How has your experience been using it? Please let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again sometime in the future.